I put a few coats of satin lacquer on the cabinet and I think it's looking pretty good so I'm starting to put the set back together. First thing I did was mount my repaired antenna. If you recall the base is original and the wiring part on the inside that's original but the telescoping antenna part that I got from another fellow TV restorer. He had discovered that you could scavenge telescoping antenna components from aftermarket or other branded uh, vintage TV antennas and they would fit in predictors. Now he got his from a channel master. Well, I've been hunting around on eBay because I have a few other predictors that could use antennas. And I have yet to find a channel master that looked like his, but what I did find is this, which is a Zenith chrome antenna, chroma, chrome antenna, however you want to say that. And these appear to be identical. You compare the telescoping parts side by side. I think it's exactly the same thing. And the base sure looks promising. The key is, if I open this up, what is on the other side of this plastic housing? So the key to using this is that the plastic housing down inside was a plastic cylinder. It was a perfect diameter to fit into the predictor. So we'll have to see what's in here. If it's not, I'll just leave this alone for now because it's kind of a nifty antenna. I'm not too keen on destroying it. However, I've seen a few of these floating around. These, these are not that rare. Oh, I see that. That's cute. <laughs> you turn this and that rotates. So, like I said, I'm not crazy about uh, trashing it, but uh, these aren't. I think, a, I think a functioning predictor antenna is quite a bit more rare than one of these. I peeled back the felt to expose some screws, took those out, and this was looking very promising. So the antenna that uh, was scrapped out to get that antenna base from, I think it was exactly the same. It was probably made by third party, and they're rebranded. Because he, he had a photo of his, and it was clearly a channel master, but it looks similar to this. And this base part looks identical. So I don't see any marks inside other than December something. Looks like 1976 maybe? 74? Which is considerably later than the Predictor. So they may have made this type of antenna for a long time. So that's why I say that these are not exactly rare. So... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose sleep over cutting this apart. Here are my two patients. These are both from tandem sets and both damaged. This one, telescoping antenna is almost completely gone. All that's left is a a bit of the base and a spring and the broken off plastic. This one has a bit more of it. Uh, what happened to this one is the telescoping antenna got flexed back and forth a few times and metal fatigue set in and it just snapped right off. I actually got it right here. So I think um, swing at diameter is right and it sure appears to be that both of these will transplant perfectly into these two. And then my holiday and all three tandem sets will have very nice antennas. Now, in case you're wondering what an original looks like, here we go. So basically, identical at the bottom, or pretty darn close. The only difference really is the tip. And uh, I like these replacements better. The originals had pretty thin plating. This one, it's already gone. It's turned grayish in a lot of areas. And this one... Looks to me like maybe it was never plated because every area sure looks to be very silvery. But uh, I think the brass is the way to go. Looks great against mahogany. 
indeed that plastic was the right diameter. So I took a Dremel tool and cut them out. Then use a utility knife to shave off the, the uh, support ribs on the side and they fit snugly inside of the metal bracket. Only minor issue is that the shoulder of the plastic between the, you know, where the metal and plastic meet, it's chamfered. It's like a 45 degree angle. The original, it's right angle. Now this plastic is what rests against the wood cabinet. So depending on how large the opening in the wood is actually cut, it might not matter. But if it's really snug, these might not fit completely flush against the cabinet. I don't think it really matters as long as there's a whole lot of weight or strain or stress around these or anything. And I suppose one could take a file or something and make that shoulder more of a right angle. And I suppose there is one other minor issue too I should point out. The originals fully collapse inside the cabinet. That's what this plastic tube is for. These do not. This is as far down as they go. They will always stick out of the cabinet a little more than a foot. Not really a big deal, but these do stick out the side of the cabinet. So they could bump into things if you're transporting one. Now they do fold over. So you can fold it up against the side of the cabinet. They don't, you don't have to stick out at a right angle. You can mount them like that. But just thought I'd point that out. But uh, hey, for my $15 investment and a little uh, time and effort, I have got myself two nice looking Predicta antennas. I'm doing a little work on the side mounted legs now. I removed all the rust with rust remover which uh, ended up taking off the last traces of the brass plating. Still a bit pitted but uh, I'll proceed anyways and what I'm doing now is attempting to brass plate it myself. Uh, I said this to a commercial place. Well, if I could find a commercial place that would do it at a reasonable cost, I might give it a try, but I haven't been able to yet. And what they would uh, do is polish the super bright and get rid of all the little pits. For an extra fee, of course. Or I could try doing it myself, but I don't have one of those bench buffers, and plus it's a lot of, a lot of work on my part, so... I'm just trying to make these look a little bit better. Now I could just leave them silvery, which actually does look okay, but that brass look against the mahogany is a lot nicer. So what I'm giving a shot now is one of those home uh, brass plating kits is from Caswell. I've had some luck with doing this in the past, and I've, I've learned over time some tricks for doing it better. So the idea is you clip the ground lead onto the item to be plated, and then you've got this wand and you wrap uh, material around it they supply like cheesecloth or gauze I'm just using some paper towel here and you soak that in a solution and this is connected to the positive and you brush over it you might be able to see that it's kind of sizzling a bit there and some foaming action well that's because there's about an amp of current passing through when I do this so the first few times I tried doing this I thought well this looks like crap it's all black and then blotchy and looks terrible. Well, I learned afterwards you've got to clean this or buff this out with some metal polish or brass cleaner after the fact because you're getting a lot of oh, oxidized and uh, you know, tarnished material while it's being deposited. That doesn't mean it's not working. It just needs to be cleaned up afterwards. The other thing I've found is that the power supply that comes with it is not the greatest thing to use. It's just a little wall wart. Uh, five, four and a half volts DC, 300 milliamps coming out of it. What I'm using is a Hewlett Packard uh, 6228B. Now I don't need, it's a dual power supply, I'm only using half of it. This puts out upwards of an amp, but this is current controlled. You can set the current to be say half an amp and it will automatically alter the voltage to maintain a constant current. This works a lot better. So uh, 
in about five minutes I've gotten this far. I'm going to go ahead and finish off the other half of it and then uh, buff it up and see if it looks halfway respectable. Again, I'm not expecting miracles out of this, just something that looks a little bit nicer than what I started with. Here's the result after doing a little polishing. I think I'll do another pass with the plating. I mean, it's definitely gotten some color to it more than the untreated one, but not quite as brassy as I'd like it to be. And now I can also see that that pitting is even more apparent. And, uh, you know, this, this might actually be plated with something, too. I don't know that this is done to the bare steel. This might be some actual chrome plating or something like that. So it might, in other words, it might be steel and then nickel or chrome and then brass. I'm not sure. So trying to, like, grind down and polish this might uh, cause some problems as well. But again, I'm just trying to make it look a little bit better rather than going nuts. You know, someday, if I find a, a place that uh, can do a good job at a reasonable price. I might send these out and the, and the hardware for my other predictors as well. On the other arm I'm trying a slightly different product from Texas Plater Supply. Uh, slightly different brush to don't know if this outfit's still around. I really bought this stuff some years ago and don't remember the details. However, this does not turn dark while you're plating. Notice my current is drawing about the same, by the way. That's the thing you gotta watch out for when you're doing this is this whole thing is negative, this wand is positive, except for this one, instead of having gauze or paper towel, it's actually got a brush on the end. And if you're not careful and you touch the two metal bits together, you get a spark. Uh, anyways, so in other words, the material, the solution is conductive, and you're just trying to create a layer of the solution between the two electrodes, and the electricity causes a plating effect action to happen. See, this one is actually looking nice and brass colored with no discoloration, so I need to polish it afterwards. So, this one's definitely a winner. I'm going to do a little research online and see if this place is still around. Let's make a little bit more on this one and then I'll go over the other one again and call this done and uh, actually pretty successful I think. And here the two are after a couple rounds of plating. I think that's going to work out just fine. By way of comparison here is a screwdriver which is not plated. So that is how this looked before I started. Now eventually this will tarnish so I think I will shoot a little coating of some clear gloss lacquer over it. I tried doing a web search on Texas Plater Supply brass electroplating compound and I wasn't having much luck. Uh, but then I just tried a search just on brass electroplating compound and the first hit I got I'm sure is where I ordered this from which is Antique Electronic Supply, also known as TubesAndMore.com and obviously that's the same stuff. So, uh, $10.25, you can try it out yourself. I can't guarantee your results, but worked out fine for me for just something quick and simple that looks pretty darn good. Now you will need your own power supply or batteries to try this out, that's why it's inexpensive. Here it is after a coat of lacquer mounted on the cabinet, and it actually doesn't look too bad at all. From a distance, you don't notice the pitting at all.
I received some comments about how the new veneer and the color I used didn't match the original finish that well in some parts of the video and in some of the photographs I've taken. But in other photographs, other parts of the video, it looked pretty good. Well, I got two explanations for that. Lighting and the angle. So, some of the photographs I took, I used a flash. The flash definitely distorts the color. Now, as far as the angle goes, this faux finish always looks the same, no matter what angle you're at. This real veneer definitely changes appearance depending on the angle you're at. Hope the camera's picking that up. In person, it's definitely a noticeable difference. So it looks best in person when you're looking like at this angle, straight out, in other words. But from the side, it's much more noticeable that this is lighter in color. And I swear in other photographs, it looks like this is darker. But <laughs> trust me, in, in person, facing it straight on, it looks pretty good. Certainly a lot better than it did before I started, or before I did anything. So here it is with the chassis reinstalled and the CRT mount. So here are those nice new plated legs. And cleaned up grill cloth um, and the knobs. These are reproduction knobs. And then there's the antenna. So, I still have a little more work to do. I want to align it, basically. And uh, then I will remount the picture tube and do one final video on this set and finally call this project done.